All right, we're going to get started here. Uh, my name is James Hogan. I'm your OptionView product consultant, and today we're talking about OptionView's earnings module. Um, as you can see, I'm looking at the uh, OptionView homepage here. Uh, I just wanted to show you where you would go to get more information. Uh, first off, you would click on this trading tab at the top here, and then you can click on this earnings play module. Okay, earnings plays, uh, you can find a lot of information here. Um, Another video that I did, uh, Len Yates, uh, our Option View CEO, did a webinar as well. There's a more recent one uh, that Jim Graham did as well. These are the returns that uh, Jim Graham uh, actually back tested for the first quarter. I just wanted to quickly show you this. He started out with a 30,000 in capital um, and he placed all the recommended trades uh, for the first quarter. There were 83 of them. 66% of them were winning and the return. Uh, on all of the trades was 155 percent so um, you can see the runners uh, did the best here um, and he did place all the trades trying to you utilize uh, the same amount of capital on all the trades okay so um, wanted to share that with you again if you were just at our option view homepage you would click on trading click on the earnings module and you can find details here okay um, what I was gonna do now is take you over to option view you do need option view to take advantage of the earnings module. Uh, you could have uh, any package uh, as long as you have option view you're going to get the uh, and you'll get access to the, to the module. Um, it's not available during a trial however and the reason behind that is because there are so many trades you can see there are 83 trades that it suggested so um, it's just giving away too much information to have a trial of this. Um, what you would do when you receive the earnings module is you're prompted every Monday to uh, run the import earnings place function okay and this is what it looks like this is the default setting right here okay and you've got one two three four five types of trades that you're gonna run the report for okay and what it's doing is it's running uh, back test so to speak against all of the optionable candidates that fit these parameters okay DVO means dollar volume of options traded on, a, on an average okay and it's in terms of thousands so this we're looking here the default setting is all of these any candidates we look at are going to be trading at least a hundred thousand dollars on average per day okay you can manipulate these settings uh, you can tighten it up for certain uh, types of trades or you can loosen it up for others okay um, I know Jim right now uh, let me know that he is actually loosening this up a little bit and the reason behind that uh, having a lower DBO is for runners you are only buying calls or buying puts what the runners do is this is gonna say that on average over the last two years after an earnings announcement the stock runs in the same direction of the jump whether it's up or down an extra 3.5 percent per day or more this is the minimum quality rating okay so basically with this strategy you would wait for the earnings announcement see what happens that next day by calls or puts whether it's an up move or a down move and then take that position off at the end of the day the whole idea is that it's going to continue to run in this direction and this has been I said like I said back tested eight times or two years over the past uh, all of the earnings seasons uh, over the past two years okay so that's runners echoes what echoes is is it's looking at underlines that make a move and then it correlates that to a different underline that has earnings announcements within 18 days of this uh, specific event so basically what you would do is you would look at this watch this earnings event and then if it was up move you would put a directional trade on the echo the other candidate that's going to move in the same direction as the one that just announced um, it could be a week later it could be two weeks later but whatever it is whenever their earnings date is and it'll sh I'll show you how it tells you that is that you would put on a, a directional trade uh, with the anticipation that's going to move in the same direction okay earnings pairs is one of my favorites um, the reason is that it's uh, very low risk um, what you're doing is you're putting on a straddle okay um, 
not on the specific underlying that's announcing, but on something else that is, has been correlated and shown to move in the same direction um, the next day. So a good example of this is Visa. Visa announces um, tomorrow. Today you would put a straddle on MasterCard. Okay, Visa has a big move. The whole idea is that MasterCard is going to move with it. Okay, the, the ideal thing here is that you're not experiencing the volatility crush in MasterCard straddle. So if Visa doesn't move, MasterCard doesn't move, all you're losing is the commissions to get in the trade and uh, a day of theta. Okay, so very little risk here. Um, I really like these a lot. Um, minimum quality rating. This is a 10 here. This means that in order for it to come in as a candidate in our list, it has to make on average 10% or more. Okay. So over the last two years, on average, the trade has to have made 10% or more. So that's the earnings pairs. The prime non-movers, okay, this is something that um, is known to not move very much. Usually it comes in line with um, whatever analysts are ex expecting. Okay, so um, a good example of that, and I'll show you this one as well in a moment, is uh, uh, Delta was one of the ones last week. So basically Delta came out with earnings. You would put on an at-the-money at calendar um, or naked straddle um, the afternoon before the announcement, and then you would hold it through to the next day, and you're going to capture all that volatility crush. Okay, um, and then here, this minimum quality rating is it has to have an average rating uh, return of 20% or more. Okay. The other qualifier I want to point out over here is that over the past two years, it has to have had at least two profitable trades. Okay. You can up this to eight. You can up it to six. A lot of people will do four or five or six because there may be they want to, uh, you know, get some more high quality uh, candidates to come in. Okay. The other one is prime movers. This is the opposite of the non-movers. This is these are the ones that are going to move really big. Uh, we had Netflix, um, uh, Biogen was one that was today um, that's still uh, in play. Uh, basically, you know these candidates that come up on your list, they're going to tell you when to put them on, whether the afternoon or the morning. They're going to tell you what to take them off the next day, whether it's the morning or the next day. So the module is back testing whether it's better to hold these things through to close to the close or take them off immediately you know the next morning okay so these prime movers are the ones that make really big moves okay so you could come in here and change these defaults if you wanted to you would hit go and once you hit go what it's going to do is it's going to create these tabs at the bottom for you that i have right here okay E primes, E overs, E pairs, echoes, and runners. Okay, it's going to list them all in chronological order. And each tab has roughly 10 to 30 trades in them. Okay, so you can see the amount of trades that you'd be doing per quarter, per earnings season. Okay, so those are the candidates. And what I wanted to also show you is Jim Graham is actually doing a back testing for the third quarter here. Uh, the last back test he did was using 30,000 in capital. This time he's doing a little bit differently. And I'll share that with you right now. I basically copied an email that he sent me. So what's happening is, um, again, he's following every trade for the third quarter, but he started this account with 6,000 instead of 30,000. Okay. Um, and he's placing roughly $2,000 on each trade, trying to get close to that number. Okay. Um, so far, we've only been in the earnings play season about a week and a half, and he's had five recommended trades so far and five winners. Here are the returns so far. Okay. So roughly with the $6,000, he's turned it into 11,000, you know, close to 90% return in the first week. Here are the results here. Okay, so we're just getting started here. There's tons of trades still left to do. We're, like I said, the 80 some that he did the first quarter. He's only done five so far. There's a few this week that aren't updated yet, um, but I'm going to show you the other, the rest of the trades this week. Kind of a little bonus if you guys watch this soon, you can get to 
uh, take advantage of, of some of those trades. Or nice thing in option view is if you want to paper trade these with back trader, if you want to go back in time and test some of these strategies um, that are recommended, um, you can go back and, and do so in, in option view. Okay. So fantastic returns are off to a really good start this year so far. Okay. I'm going to jump back to option view here. Okay. And let's take a look at uh, Dallas. Uh, not Dallas. Uh, DAL is what I'm looking for. But Delta was um, the 14th before the market opens. Okay. So you would want to put this calendar on because this is a non-prime, non-mover on our list. Um, you can see the trade that Jim did. And so what I would do is I would actually go to NetView to demonstrate this for you. I'm going to go to Back Trader. I am going to go back to there is Dallas again. We're going to go back to the 13th. And you would always put these straddles on close to the close. So and let's just say I'm going to go to um, let's just say 1300. Okay. So this would be about one o'clock. I'll try. Actually, I'll move it a little bit closer to the close. I'll probably go 2:30. Chicago time is what I'm looking at here. There we go. Oh, one more. Oh. This is close enough. So we'll go. We'll say we're going to put it on an hour before the close. Okay. And I'm going to go back to Delta here once the update's complete. Now I'm in back trader mode on this date and time. Okay. Gonna jump into let me switch accounts here for just a test account. Now I'm gonna jump into Delta. Okay. And you could decide whether it's the calls and the puts. It's it's really up to you which one you'd want to do. Um what we're gonna do, uh we'll do an at the money. Uh let's see. Looks like there's a little bit more here just because we're closer. We'll just do this one. So let's say we were gonna I'm just gonna use ten. And this is the at the money calendar that's recommended. Okay, um, let's increase this a little bit. Okay, okay, so that's the trade we were going to do at the money calendar, close to the close. I'm going to convert this trade, so now we're going to track it. Okay, so now I'm going to move forward to the next day at this time and see where we're at. Cost us eight sixty one with the requirements to put this on. Had some commissions in there. Okay, update complete. You can see where we're at right now. So we analyze this, and um, we are roughly up 14%. Okay, um, when you put this on, um, let's go another uh, half an hour into the future here and see where it was at. And I gotta look at Dallas again and see if it uh, might have been to take it off in the morning. Let's take a look at where this one was in the morning. Okay, roughly the same. Let's go back to the morning. It might have been the calendar that you said you'd take it off in the morning. So let's just see where it was at 9:30. And I could always go back and look at Jim's results to see exactly when uh, the ideal time would have been to take it off. I've got to go like this, and I've got to analyze it again. Analyze it again, close. And then let's look at his, let's look at his results again. So the, so the Delta Airlines, oh, so we're right there, right around the same amount um, of return. He used a little bit more capital, um, but he took it off. It doesn't say the time that he took it off. So, so but this one was, you know, roughly around a 10% uh, gainer on, on this one. Looks like the naked, this is the naked straddle, which was another strategy that was recommended as well. And looks like that one did a little bit better. Nope, this is the straddle. This is the uh, calendar here. Okay. So that's the other thing for prime non-movers. You can be doing uh, naked straddles and calendars on them as well. Okay. So... I'm just going to go on to my T-log, and I'm going to get rid of this one. And then we can take a look at, I'm going to get out of back trader now, and look at some of the trades that are on right now. Um, this is what you would do. So every week that you 
Uh, every Monday you're prompted to run the earnings module just to bring in new candidates if any pop up and then it updates all your tabs down here. Then you would come up here and you would go view weekly earnings planner. So every week I come in on Monday and I see what are the prime movers, what's going on this week, okay? And it tells you right away, afternoon, morning, what do you do? In the afternoon you put on a, uh, a straddle for Netflix, also for VMware, okay? The next day it says that in the afternoon you're going to close these trades, okay? Open Microsoft, it's a prime mover, okay? Open DFS, not sure what that is, prime mover, okay? Earnings pair, open Yahoo. Um, so basically, you're opening a Yahoo uh, straddle. It's not coming out with earnings. Microsoft is coming out with earnings. So this is one of my favorites because you'd be able to put a straddle on Yahoo. It says quality rating is 51%. That means on average over the last two years, it's made 51%. This trade makes 51% on average. And it does tell you the volume. is like there's tons of volume here. Okay. Next day, it tells you. Um, in the afternoon, it'll tell you when to take off these trades that you put on. Close these. Okay. Um, Microsoft was also a prime mover, so not only did you have a, uh, a trade on Microsoft, but you had its, uh, its results um, as a pair for Yahoo. Okay. So here are some more prime movers for today that you would have on right now. Okay. Now, this is the echo. So what it tells you here is it's telling you to watch eBay. Okay, that's the primary eBay. Okay, so what that means is if eBay makes a big move, you would then be able to say, okay, eBay did it, made a big move. Now I'm going to go put on the trade on whatever the echo is of eBay. Okay. Here are the trades that are recommended for this afternoon. Of course, you close these other trades the, uh, later today. Okay, these Visa prime mover quality rating is 20%. On average, with a straddle on Visa, you're going to make 20%. Okay, here's another prime mover, SKX. 20% on average return. Another one is HA. These are the big prime movers it's saying to put an at the money straddle on. Okay. You would close Visa in the morning, the others you would leave on till the afternoon. Historically, that's shown to be give you a better return. For Visa, close in the morning. For these other ones, close them in the afternoon. Okay, here's an earnings pair that you would put on. Okay, you'd open this underline based on this announcement coming on Monday. I'm sorry, coming, uh, coming on Monday, that's correct. Okay, and then you close these trades here. These are awesome. These are runners. These do really well. So basically, open HA. As a runner, you're going to buy a call or a put, or calls or puts, because um, on average, this thing will gap and then run 4.8% in that direction. Same thing, TRN is a runner. Okay, so you'd buy a call or a put, and then, you know, right around the open, and then usually the rest of the day, these stocks will run in that same direction, these percentages. Okay, and so these are updated all the time whenever you run your, your, uh, earnings module importing the uh, trades for the week uh, it's constantly updating it's taking things that no longer qualify taking them off the list and then it's adding things that have now are qualified okay so this is a uh, every week you would see this okay and they're color coded you could print this out so you know exactly what you're doing okay that's kind of a really a really neat feature there to have a calendar like that okay so the other thing I wanted to show you is what is available besides the earnings module the earnings module currently right now for the month of July we have a 10% off special going on it um, and the other thing we have a 10% off on is if you go to discoveroptions.com click on mentoring and you can see right now we have this course which is taught by Frank Fahey it's called trading earnings announcements okay not only do you get three months of the earnings module you can test it out paper trade it put these trades on um, you also get Frank's strategy what Frank is doing is he's putting calendars on double calendars on before the announcements um, he's got a, his own kind of twist on uh, 
uh, putting calendar spreads. It's really awesome because you get some videos that he's done. Here's a little video that I did just demonstrating you know, the ins and outs of the earnings module again. But you get two one-on-one -on -one sessions with Frank, two one-hour one-on-one sessions with Frank. And he's also great at sending emails out to anybody that is trading earnings announcements, showing you what he's doing, showing you his trades, showing you what fills he gets. Um, so it's really, uh, really a great course, um, trading up until earnings, and then he's, so he's take, putting a lot of trades on often and getting out before earnings, but he's also going through on a lot of them, and he tells you his strategy for doing that as well. So this gives you three months of the earnings module. Again, it's 10% off for this, so it's uh, 675 for the month of July. So it's pretty cool. Um, the earnings module right now is 19.99, and with uh, you get 10% off of that through the month of July if you want to do a year of that as well, and then. Course, we are always here available for you to uh, walk you through that or explain it or a lot of times we'll get calls from customers that are, are putting these trades on and and um, a lot of ins and outs and, and experience that we've gained just from doing this for so long that we can really kind of help you out with any questions you have uh, as far as that goes um, let's go back to option view and we'll take a look one more time at let's go back and see how um, let's actually look at our earnings planner again, uh, weekly planner. So we would be putting on this yesterday afternoon, and we're still holding this. So I, you know, usually you want to hold this till around two o'clock, two thirty. So I'm going to put this trade on as I would have yesterday afternoon, um, and just kind of walk you through um, how it worked out. Okay, so we're going to go again into NetView, Backtrader. Um, I'm going to go back. Let's say we would have done this at 14:30, Wednesday start, and we're going to do Biogen. This is one you would have put on yesterday afternoon. Okay, and here comes Biogen. 2.30 yesterday, put this one on, see where we're at right now, okay, and we'll just do two of them and see what happens here, there it is, two, I'm going to convert the trade, okay, going to close that, would have cost us 3000 for two lot. I'm going to close this. It's going to bring us into the current time right now. And now I'm going to go ahead and see where we're at. Okay. Doing okay. Doing decent on this one. Okay. We're still holding it this afternoon. Hoping it's going to run a little further. Okay. Uh, at worst, if it pulls back a little bit, it looks like it might be a break even one. Okay. So. That is the earnings module. Um, it is a very, very fun and uh, exciting thing to be a part of. There are so many trades and so many things to do. Um, you know, uh, someone was talking about uh, that around earnings season, the beginning of earnings season, the your first few weeks of earnings season, it's real difficult to trade non-directional just because of all the um, or some of the systems out there just because of all the announcements that are coming out and the big swings and some of the underlying. So this is a really great way to kind of add some, you know, kind of spice and some really great opportunities to your, uh, you know, kind of your arsenal of, of different trading strategies that you're doing. Okay. So that is it. Again, if you want to find out more information, um, let me go back to the first very front option view page here. Uh, this is, again, you would click on trading to find the earnings module, but Jim Graham actually two weeks ago did a nice uh, um, demonstration of the modeling that's involved with the earnings module and, you know, how it's going to give you an edge and how it, these candidates that are being pulled in from the earnings module are really fantastic because of the modeling um, to get the results, um, the past returns that these things are, are showing and coming up uh, as your candidates. Um, and why they're candidates. So this is a great, really insightful video about how Option View models the crush um, and the ramp up in volatility before the announcement. Okay. So 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and end it here. Uh, if you are ever interested or have questions or want to look at some of these trades together, we'd be happy to do so. You can reach us at this phone number up here. Or you can always email me at james at optionview.com. Okay. Thanks again.